Hey guys, uh, we're going to talk here a little bit about EMF and internal resistance. And I have here the data that I took from an actual experiment in the lab using power supplies and uh, variable resistors. So this uh, data will give us the internal resistance of one of our school power supplies, which is quite cool, actually, uh, if you think about it. So let me talk about simulations. One of the problems with simulations is certainty is kind of unknown or unquantifiable. Uh, frequently, it's just not built into the simulation. You would need to include random error in your simulation, right? And a lot of the time they don't do that. So you get just these perfectly straight lines and the data points don't deviate, et cetera, et cetera. And you can kind of see that here on this graph where some of my points are not right on the line. That is probably not going to be the case for your simulated data. Okay, so when we get back here in the physics lab, we will talk about uncertainty because I used a, kind of a special technique here that's very, very useful and I want to share it with you guys when you get back. So we will definitely uh, be doing a lot more lab work when you get back into school. Anyway, moving on. So we have here our current versus voltage chart and you can see I've formatted the axes and everything is looking uh, pretty good. Um, looks like I still have a little bit of work to do on the axes formatting. Um, just a quick note while I've noticed it, your decimal places or sig figs on your axes should be consistent. And as you can see, they are not here. So that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to dwell on it. Hopefully you will not either. After you insert your lines best fit, you're going to find that you have an equation uh, that looks something like this guy. Now, uh, because you have simulated data, there is a very good chance that your equation is going to look quite a lot nicer than this equation. And again, that's just due to uh, the random error that you will find in real world situations, both random and systematic error. Although your uh, simulation was designed to produce a little bit of systematic error. So uh, if you have not found that yet, you should go take a look at your data. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, let's take a look. Uh, we need to go from this equation here to this equation here. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, first, make sure we define our variables. Always important. Uh, I should also point out that this is the equation in your data booklet. Okay, so what do we have here? We have EMF, and this is the uh, potential difference of the power supply. Uh, so this is the presumed uh, potential difference of the power supply. Okay, um, we have then the resistance of the circuit. We have the current through both the circuit and through the power supply. Uh, it is running through the power supply in theory. Okay, we then also have our small r, which is uh, internal resistance. I should change this, sorry about that. I uh, love it when I find mistakes. Okay, so that small r is the internal resistance of our power supply. Okay, uh, so our next step on our quest to turn this equation into something like this equation is to distribute uh, current to both resistances inside our uh, parentheses there. And using Ohm's law then, note that IR will become a voltage. And this voltage has a very specific value that I'll talk about in a second. There it is. So this is the voltage that we measure across the battery or power supply. Okay, so now this is looking, uh, it should be looking very familiar to everyone. What do we have? 
uh, please pause the video and think about it if you uh, don't know immediately. I will wait. Okay, I have waited. So what we have here is, of course, the form of a line equation. Nice. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, we have our y value, and this is on the y-axis. should recognize that. Uh, let me pull this out a little bit. Okay, uh, we then have our y-intercept, or b. And we have our slope, which in this case is going to be equal to r. And of course we have our x value, which is in this case current, okay? So there it is, y equals mx plus b. And that means we can pull our internal resistance off of this graph. It is going to be, dun, 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 the slope of the graph. Nice. And our y-intercept then is going to be our EMF, okay? And there you go. That is how you get internal resistance and EMF from a current versus voltage graph, okay? So you need to know this information. It commonly pops up on paper three style questions. Okay, so it's, imp it's pretty important for test purposes. So hopefully that all makes sense. If it does not, please don't hesitate to ask me questions. Um, and as always, make sure you practice some problems and kind of wrap your head around it. Okay, have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you later.